are on their way. The United Nations promised another 2,000. And yet, most earthquake survivors still don't have the help they need. Our correspondents have seen two of the groups who are suffering the most from that lack of help. In a moment, the elderly, abandoned on the streets. First, Robert Moore reports from one hospital where the insult of medicine shortages has added to the injury of Burns victims. His report starts with very distressing pictures. There is no easy way to show these scenes. They are the Burns victims, those who were not only trapped in the rubble, but then survived the fires that broke out inside the wreckage as gas pipes ruptured. But why are they here, in a decaying hospital, facing probable death through infection? The Norwegian doctor in charge is overwhelmed, and as he battles on, he doesn't know where blame lies. It's the most frustrating thing you can experience as a doctor is to, to have patients that need medicines or supplies and you don't have them because for some strange reasons our plane didn't get priority. And you know, uh, what's going on high up there in the coordination and whatever people do up there, I don't have a clue. The frustration here on the ground is intense. Why are these patients who are clearly critically ill not being evacuated? Who is in charge? It's not about distributing blame, but it is about life and death. Lives are being saved and heroic work is being done in many makeshift clinics, like this one being run by the US military. But the problem of feeding and caring for several million Haitians has simply been overwhelming. What I have witnessed is a failure of logistics, not of compassion. Just ask the Americans themselves. That we have, but this they are no less exasperated, and in these desperate times, classrooms have become operating theatres. I think nine days after this earthquake, the situation remains de desperate, and we have hundreds of patients waiting, still waiting for care. But so much more could have been done. Why are bodies still lying abandoned in the streets? Why are these camps receiving no food and no water? In a country as impoverished and dysfunctional as Haiti, an operation like the Berlin airlift was never going to be easy, but it should have been so much better than this. And the biggest question for me, who is establishing the priorities that leave Burns victims, the most vulnerable patients of all, not abandoned, but certainly stranded? Robert Moore, ITV News, in Port-au-Prince. So as medical supplies are running out for Haiti's burns victims, so is time for Haiti's elderly people. Many of those who survived the earthquake are now having to survive on the streets. Our international editor, Bill Neely, reports on the elderly abandoned to their fate. They are at the end of their days, but they never thought they would end like this. Living on the street, abandoned by the state, neglected by the world. 85 old and mentally disturbed men and women, helpless, only a few local people keeping them alive. They were pulled from the rubble of their care home where seven of their friends died. They have little care now. A local doctor came once. Apart from that, nothing. Oh, they, they don't have any, any help from the insurance community. Nothing. nothing. No, food, no food, no water, no, water. no medicines. No medicines. Many of them were injured in the earthquake. Many are already seriously ill. Their drugs are buried in the rubble. They lie in their own waste, life ebbing out of them. We need water, medicine and food. If they don't get it, he says, they'll begin dying. These people are living in this squalor in the very center of the capital city. It's day nine, and they still haven't received any help, any aid from abroad. It makes you wonder whether, far from being one of the biggest aid operations in history, it isn't, in fact, one of the worst. They try to keep their strength and their dignity, but it's hard. The home's staff fled. Only two came back. They wash those they can. Others are simply too frail, bedridden, or sick. Already bewildered and scared by what happened, they are shaken by aftershocks. Two more today. 
Governments boast of what they are sending. 12,000 foreign troops, hundreds of millions promised in aid. But these, the most vulnerable, the weakest, have been let down by the strong. There is no relief for their pain and suffering. They must ask themselves how it could be like this. Life on the street, in the dirt. Haiti's pain on every face. Bill Neely, ITV News, Port-au-Prince. And Bill joins us live now from Port-au-Prince. Bill, you've covered this aid operation from the outset and many others similar to it around the world. Is this the worst you've seen? Well, it is, it is certainly one of them. I mean, I've covered uh, China where the state response uh, to the earthquake was really first class. Pakistan, uh, where the aid was coordinated very well. Here, it's very different because uh, the aid isn't being coordinated well. I did talk to one American who said this has Katrina written all over it, and by that he meant the botched response to Hurricane Katrina that devastated New Orleans and the failure to get aid there quickly. Here, well, this is a much bigger disaster, and given the scale of the need, the international community's big promises to help and the failure to deliver on those promises, I think there is some justice in his judgment that this is perhaps the worst uh, response to a natural disaster uh, there has been. Uh, the world promised a great deal. Haitians were expecting a world-class response. I don't think they've got it. Bill, thank you. There's lots more.